All right, so at this point, uh, if you were trying to get this to loop, remember the concept is that the ending of the background should be similar, should be the same as the start. The, the start and the end should be the same. Where you might be struggling with it a little bit, even though you made the, the end line up exactly with the beginning, where you may be struggling is you might forget. You have to go back to the main scene one and also account for the new amount of drawing that you made. So if I was editing hills and I added, you see the end over here now looks like the beginning. But when I tested it, it still kind of jumped. That was because I needed to also go back to uh, scene one and go to the final frame and actually move that over. Because what I had drawn, again a moment ago, what I had drawn was out here. So it's not doing me any good. I had to go to the final frame and move that ending point back over here. And I put a guide here, a couple of guides to help me. On the first frame, you see right here, on the first frame, the whole thing starts right there. So I put a little target. Uh, I need to then go to the final frame and make sure that where it ends is that place so I can get the, the best loop. I've got a I've got some guides there. Remember you can just grab from the left ruler and drag a guide to help yourself out. So I've got a guide where it ends right there and then I go to the final frame and approximately where I connected it it's still at the same height and then it's at about the same vertical spot. This is all the new stuff. This new stuff now is visible which wasn't a moment ago. Now if I save it and test it, I should get a loop. So I have to connect the ends of the animation, but I also have to show the beginning and the end of the animation on screen. So here it is, and you can see the spot where I connected. It's like a little, little bump right there. But uh, there's a loop. It takes a little effort, and we can work on it in the, in the break, uh, in the lab and such. But... Um, I think we'll do one thing before the music. Uh, we've got this. Uh, we've got this background, which is a simple one background, one element is scrolling. If we uh, wanted to to do a little bit of depth, this is the parallax scrolling background. Uh, you see this a lot in in video games where. Uh, different backgrounds are moving at different rates. Things that are close to you, the big, basic theory is things that are close to you uh, move faster than things that are further than you. If you're riding in a car and you look out the window, the road, which is very close to you, is moving by really fast. But the mountains are moving really slow. And maybe the clouds are moving even slower because they're even further. So that just means we have different backgrounds on different layers moving at different speeds. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow down this background movement. I think it's going now too fast. So I'm at 70 frames in my animation. Uh, I'm going to put it up to 100 frames. That's approximately 4 seconds. So on my timeline, first of all, I'm going to drag my ending keyframe of the background to 100. Oh, let's make it safe, 125. That's going to be uh, 5 seconds. Right, 24 times 4 would be approximately 100 times 5 is approximately 125. And then I want the guide to be, to be visible all the way to 125, so F5. Just to check that, it's going to be a little bit slower. I've got more to show, so therefore, it's uh, it's slower, more time. If I want to make multiple, uh, you know, scrolling backgrounds, let's say, okay, he's walking in the in the woods uh, or the forest or whatever, but. Let's say uh, we also want other things to move around, like the, uh, uh, like, like the clouds. So 
with the clouds, I can draw a cloud and then start to move it in its old layer. I know I'm already, I already know I'm going to add a cloud and it'll be better to go with symbols. So perhaps from the beginning here, I'm going to start with a symbol. So in my library, I'm going to add a symbol first and call it clouds, type of graphic. With the brush tool, I'll draw a very simple cloud shape. Cloud, sure. And draw a cloud in the symbol. I made the symbol first, and in the symbol, I'll go back to scene one. I'm going to lock the background layer. make a new layer and I'll call it clouds so the walker is on its own layer the background of the hills is on its own layer there's a new layer for clouds and I've got the symbol of the clouds I'm going to drag a copy say somewhere inside of somewhere inside of your frame somewhere right here um, I'm going to start the cloud somewhere here and then I'll go over to frame 125 so that I can make a new keyframe to move it over there So I'll go over to frame 125. We need to do F6, which is insert uh, keyframe. It copies the existing frame. So F6, then I'll move it to the left. Insert classic tween. Create classic tween. That's the basic idea of the parallax background. Background, different background elements in their own layers working at different speeds. Now, here, uh, I get the same thing that doesn't look like a loop. Well, that's because we started the cloud visibly, and then it disappears visibly. We should have started it slightly outside of the canvas and ended it slightly outside of the canvas. What's that? Oh, that's better. That's way that right. more smooth. We're going to do that right now. I'm oh, the cloud. I'm going to move it over to the right just a little bit, and then move it to the left. So here's how I'm going to fix that. Based on what I've already got, I'm going to go back to the timeline here. And I'm going to go back to the first keyframe. And I'm going to move that a little bit outside out of the, out of the canvas. It's going to start outside of the canvas. So just move it over back to frame one, move your cloud over. And then I'm going to go to the final keyframe and move it so that it's outside. 
with the move tool. No, I mean, like, the, animation. the whole cloud animation? Okay, I'll be with you just one moment. Let me just move mine over. So I'm going to start it at the end and finish it at the end. So the illusion is that it goes out of the screen and then it comes again. Question. Are we supposed to put the statement ahead of the clouds? So conceptually, the cloud is on different layers, yes. And it looks a little weird because we never filled in the guy's head. The, the guy's head is empty. So this is going back to the idea that when we work here and we have a plain white background, we forget that there are things that are empty. You know, if I'm at a different color like that, this reminds me, well, this was transparent. I never drew that with a color. So it kind of looks like the clouds are a little weird. And that's okay for the moment. We're not doing it that complex yet.
you see the the idea is it's on a separate layer the reason the speed is different is because the uh, the uh, the amount of distance it has to travel on screen in the real world if I'm looking out the car window that piece of road that passed me was very close to me it passed really fast but those mountains that are miles away my field of vision is so wide that I don't notice how slowly it's passing in my field of vision these clouds this cloud that's up in the sky notice it has to travel this amount of distance of the field of view from here to here let's say this is a mile in the sky so it has to travel this whole distance in the same amount of time less distance needs to travel in the same amount of time it looks slow this is traveling from here all the way over here let's sort of think about it as two miles so two miles needs to be crossed in the same area in the same time so if two miles needs to be moved it moves fast here, only one mile needs to move, so it moves slow. All of these are the constants. Same frames, same FPS. The difference is how much needs to move within the visible area. And that's why then it looks like the clouds are moving slower than the, um, than the hills. And so if I was designing this perfectly completely, well, we're seeing through his head. I might have thought of drawing white in there so that we don't see through his head, but I can fix that inside of the symbol later. Let's look at uh, sound. I want to add some sound to this. So, um, most of you probably, um, most of you probably vi uh, use YouTube uh, a lot, but did you know that YouTube has like thousands of free songs that you can download? to use in, in projects for free. If you, uh, if you have a YouTube account uh, and you go over to the uh, Creator Studio, right, you've got, the, you've got the home screen of YouTube where you see all of your, I've already got a sound waiting for you, but if you're interested, if you're on your main YouTube screen and watch all the great videos, that's one thing, but if you go over to your Creator Studio, there you have a bunch of tools. And you have the Create, uh, screen. You have the audio library. You've got all of these sounds that are free for you to use in a variety of genres. Rock, country, classical, etc. I'll get back to this in a moment. I've got a sound for you ready. I downloaded it a little while ago. If you look inside of the web design folder, inside of CIS 126, inside of uh, Topic 2 Handouts, I've got here uh, payday.mp3. Drag that to your desktop. So copy that over to your desktop. Remember, save your work on your own drive, not on the network. It might not be safe there. But copy that over to your desktop, and we're going to import the sound into our animate file, similar to how we imported the tracing animation, the tracing file. So. Uh, back in animate, we'll go to file import. We'll do import to library this time. We're going to import a sound into our library so we can reuse it. Uh, the first time we did import to stage, that works best with a graphic. We wanted to get a graphic and put it directly into our animate project. This is a sound, it's a little different. Import to library. This will accept most common sound files, like mp3. From my desktop, I have payday.mp3. And I'll click Open. And in my library window, I have payday mp3. There's the sound wave of it. And I have a pause and a play there. If you have headphones, you should plug those in. If not, that's fine. You can hear mine. So we're going to use that sound in our project. We have a layer for clouds, a layer for walker, a layer for background. We should have a layer for music or for sound. So I'm going to lock my clouds layer. I'm going to make a new layer and move it to the very bottom and call it music. 
It doesn't matter where the layer is, it's audio, it won't interfere with the video, but we want a layer just for music, and I like to put it at the very bottom so that I can find it quickly. When we get complex, we have a lot of layers, perhaps. I want to find the layer quickly. If I want to synchronize, uh, when we talk about like lip syncing or synchronizing music with visuals, we want to be able to find our music track easily, our music layer, and I like to put it at the very bottom. So the way we, we can then apply this sound to the layer, one way is to simply then drag it from the library into the layer that you want. Actually, wait a minute, they changed it. What you want to do is you want to click on the layer, frame one, and go to the properties. Here it is, sound. This frame, frame one, I will go to the sound properties frame one music layer, name of sound none, and any sounds that you added will be listed here from the library, payday. So I'm starting to see on the layer the visual representation of the sound. It's about as, you know, 12 frames, half a second of silence, and the music starts. Music is playing, but music is then playing is looping. and looping and playing on top of itself. Yeah. Then, um, yes. Exactly. Right now, the music is playing for these 125 frames. The whole animation loops, and therefore it starts to play the music again. We have a very simple way to fix that here in Animate. If you click on the frame, it says right here, name of your sound, and how do you synchronize it? Event is the default. This is saying every time there's the event that you reach the start of the sound, play it again. That doesn't make sense for us. We have um, these other ways. Oh, um, change the repeat. Yeah, you got change the repeat. Repeat, loop, loop it. So we had a repeat of one time, but event was getting in our way. If we set that to loop, well, again. No, because um, if you have a loop, then it won't be doing the overlapping. You'll have to finish the first song, and then it'll do the set and do it again. Yeah. That's what it does with loops. But when you do a repeat, when you like start the song, it'll just overlap itself over and over because you're repeating over and over. That's true, but we should be also able to set either start, yeah, stop, or stream. Does that seem familiar, Angie? Why perhaps we might not have that effect? Well, it doesn't. Normally, it should be selectable. Yeah. Yeah, but the kind of odd. Let me just check that. So under loop. That's still looping on top of itself. What are we missing here? That's supposed to... Well, it seems to be doing it on both. Repeat and loop seems to be doubling up the sound. Because I remember doing this video with the music before. See, it's still looping there. Check the, check the uh, end, of the, end of the song. Be something mm, just oh yeah it. see with that it's like it just constantly gonna <gasps> keep going there's no end to it no, it is not matter you sure that shouldn't matter i think i think it does like mm -mm. you um if it shouldn't matter because there's a way yeah it's not it giving us be, yeah, if it you be. set it on start then it will never um, uh, double up on itself. You were on yeah. the oh um actually here's a good question. Are you, you did you like um, click on the very front of music? Yeah. Yeah, like on the very double check front that. of music. Yeah. Then um, press the uh, yeah. no. Hmm. Uh, what about switching it to loop first and then seeing it? That's 
we did that before, yeah. yeah. It may possibly also, be... Also, could be the warning? Well, that's what I'm sort of thinking. We're on Canvas. Maybe this needs to be under Action Script 3. Let me, let me check that. Sure. Let me just kind of check something here. File New. I'm going to go to a new, fi a new Action Script file. And then I'm going to import the same sound. Import to library. The import to library. I'm going to import it. I'm going to have some amount of frames. I'm going to add the payday, and then I'm going to select. Yeah, okay. That's that's the action script. So because we're in the format, here's the problem, everyone. We're, yeah. in, we're in the format of, H, of Canvas, uh, uh, where we can't quite control the sound via code. It's doing its own thing. Uh, so we should have used the action script 3. I just looked at my project with music. Yeah, because it's Canvas. Mine was not Canvas. It was a simple flash. Okay. So Canvas would be good for sound effects, but you'd have to use action 3 to... Uh, do actual background music. Yes, uh, I don't think we can convert from Canvas down to Actions to make, to make a new file and do some copying and pasting, probably. Um, yeah. Okay. Is there some special settings in the Publish, maybe? Let's see. Publish, loop to timeline. All right, so one thing we'll make a note of, um, and we would be able to copy and paste this into a new action script 3. The whole point of what's happening, if, if you're a little lost, what's happening here is in the classic version of Flash, before it was Animate, uh, we could have a type of file as Canvas, which is the most modern version, or the classic version of action script 3. Uh, behind the scenes, we can type code to do things. It seems like using the modern version of Canvas doesn't give us all of the effects that we want for the background music. We need to be in the classic Action Script 3. For the moment, I'm not going to worry about it, uh, but what we, we, it, it doesn't seem that we can convert this one to Action Script. However, if we create a brand new file and copy all the frames and layers, to the new file, it should work. So uh, if you've got the music playing but it doubles up on itself, that's normal for the moment. We, we did the wrong kind of file, that's okay. I'm gonna give a shot here by creating a brand new file and then copying all my items over. So you can try this if you want. I'm gonna go to File New, Action Script 3, 1920 by 1080. I'm going to go to my canvas version of my project and then click my layer, clouds, and shift click music. So I'm clicking everything, shift clicking everything. Right click, copy layers. I'll go to my Action Script 3 version, right click, paste. It seems to have brought everything. My library also has everything. Now that it's in Action Script 3, my properties let me skip to these different ones, like Stream or Start. I think Start might work better. Let me just let me just confirm that this works. I'm gonna save this. Walk Practice AS3 version.
right, so now that we have these different synchronizations, uh, start, for example, prevents an extra copy from looping on top of itself. Not until the not until there's the start of a new sound does the sound cut out, so it doesn't loop upon itself. Uh, stream is similar to that, except that it will only play music as long as the timeline is playing. See, then it starts over. Starts over. This new one seems to be a little better. Uh, so I did a copy and paste of all of the layers from the old version to the new version, and I saved it with a new with a new name, just to save it like that. In this old Canvas version, Canvas has a lot of useful things for it, but it looks like this background music looping doesn't quite behave. So as an Action Script three version, this one behaves, such as playing the sound only as a start in the synchronization of start when I test that. Background is looping, the sound is not, it continues. So what we covered today was starting to think about symbols, which are units, uh, grouped elements. We saw we made the walker into a symbol, which is going to loop. Uh, then we put um, uh, a background that was scrolling with a looping background. That took a little bit of effort to make that scrolling background looping. We made parallax backgrounds, which is backgrounds moving on different layers at different speeds and different amounts of movement. And then we dropped in some music. We'll get more complex with this, but this is already based on what we were doing just last month of getting acclimated with the drawing tools. Now it's this whole world of animation. We need to talk about other things also, scenes, uh, camera movement, and all of that. And eventually the project is going to lead to um, the assignment is going to lead to some kind of movie based on your previous character you're going to tell a story uh, the requirements and all of that will be forthcoming but we still want to learn a few techniques of animation uh, and then we'll get to that point so I'm going to save this I'm going to save a copy of my files to the network folder in case you want to copy and uh, we'll have some lab time, no homework or anything at the moment, but we'll have a little lab time until 1 in case you want to keep practicing and if you have questions. And when we come back next time, we'll, we'll look at more concepts of animation.